Welcome back to the trailer project. I loosely have the fender sitting in there. Um, what I'm trying to figure out is how I can still make these removable. And I have a plan. I'm just not 100% sure if it's going to work. So these fenders did not come with the backing. Uh, the, just the piece of sheet metal that fills this gap here all the way across to the other wheel there so I'm gonna need to trace that out and make a piece which isn't a big deal at all but tonight I want to figure out how I'm going to make these fenders removable as they will probably need to lift straight up and off since the backing is gonna have to come with the fender um, otherwise if it didn't they could come straight out towards us right now but let's get this kind of more squared up i know we're a little lower in the back than we are in the front so we'll get that evened out and i'll bring you back okay here's the plan so i'm back i got my three inches from the bottom of the fender to the top of this angle i cut these flat plates they're just a uh, three sixteenths by inch and a half or maybe two inch they were scraps that were left over from a different project they've been laying around for a while but they fit nicely in here and then I will drill, I haven't decided if one or two bolts in there. And then before I actually mount this after we paint it and everything, I will stick a piece of rubber in between there just to kind of dampen that a little bit. Um, the fender is actually wedged in here right now. Uh, once it's in position, it actually doesn't fit that tight. That's the only reason for the rubber being in there. So with the front tacked in, do the same procedure back here, three inches down, and then push it up against the frame, plate in place, flush here, flush here. I'll just run a couple tacks along there, make sure I like the fit. Can I help you, Finn? Always busy checking out what I'm doing. Lazy, as always. Okay, with the jack out of there, we're still clamped, even though technically the tack weld should hold it up there. The gap between the tire and the fender, I'm all right with. I think that looks about how it should. You gotta remember, since that leaf is broke, this one's taking most of the weight. And these uh, springs are pretty well shot to begin with. Once we get all new components back in, as far as suspension goes, new wheels and tires, we should be sitting pretty well. So I decided to go with one bolt here, one three eighths bolt, or even a half inch bolt. We plenty to hold these on. I know some people use them quick clips. The only thing I don't like about those is they don't hold a firm tension on there. I'd like something to actually hold this down while we're bouncing down the road. So it'll probably be just a single three eighths bolt that will hold these together plenty fine. I mean, we lift engines out with two three eighths bolts. So one three eighths here and one three eighths on the back will be plenty good. The three eighths hole drilled. Three eighths bolt is a nice snug fit, which is perfect. You could drill it oversized, but anytime you have a oversized hole, it's going to allow it to move around. So strictly based off putting this bolt in and then trying to get this nut under here, I have a feeling that I would be better off either tacking this nut in place 
or since they have to come up anyway a guy could take that bolt bring that up from the bottom and just put a tack on it just to hold it in these don't need to be cranked down by any means as long as they're snug especially with that rubber in there that'll keep tension on it or you could even go with a nylock nut we'll see when we get that far what i end up doing well guys what i need to do now is get a piece of probably 16 gauge and lay in the back there and trace that out unfortunately i don't have any with me tonight so i think what we might do is go on a parts run but that means i gotta go home and that means these guys are going to want to come with me so i think what i'm going to do make a quick run home grab some parts Hopefully they won't notice I left, and we'll be good. All right, I'm back for my parts run here. I bought these at a swap meet, oh, maybe three-ish years ago. And initially, I didn't hate the design of them because you're supposed to have a smaller light in here for a side running light and then your brake light goes in here but once i found out that they make a better style light that doesn't use this anymore instead of just that push in rubber grommet that likes to dry out and fall out as they age i have a different solution on how to use these so what i'm going to do i'm actually going to mount them like that basically upside down or clocked 90 degrees and the wire hole is actually going to face the outside this big hole will just be on the inside reason being after we have this blasted and all this cleaned out i'll be able to get up there and paint around in there and then you'll also be able to wash these out be able to get the road salt net out of them as soon as you seal these up and you get any sort of moisture salt whatever it may be in there it can't get back out so if I leave that facing the bottom that opening facing the bottom weld them on like this I can put smaller LED markers in here because I don't like this big light I think they're gaudy all you need is a small round light in here or maybe even the short bar style we'll see what I end up coming up with I don't have the side marker lights yet. I do have the brake lights at home. But then I can mount my brake light on this surface as they are a uh, surface mount, not a flush mount like these where they have to be cut in. So what I ended up doing was bringing it back from the original light location. You can just see right there was the original light. I came back a half inch and then I just went a quarter inch down from the top of that channel. The reason I did that, when I run my weld around here, that weld won't protrude up top. It just seems like anytime you have something sticking above, it's just something to get caught on. So this way we'll leave it a bit low. Leave it a little bit lower and it should be just fine. Well, we were a little cold right there at the beginning of that top weld going that way. Other than that, the rest of it looks pretty good. I might grind that out and do redo that and we'll see here. It's not going to hurt anything structurally. There's plenty of other material holding on. But guys, I think that's going to wrap up this video. We got a fender on tonight. We got a tail light housing mounted. I got another side to do yet, as always. So, thanks for watching, subscribing, hitting the like button. Catch you on the next one. Should we go home? You wanna go home? Let's go. Let's go home.